Welcome back to part three of three of our songwriting challenge. In part one, your challenge was to find the four magic chords and to play around with different chord progressions. In part two, your challenge was to decide on the shape and mood of your song. Today, in part three, we're going to learn how to express yourself through your song, how to weave together words and melody to create a unique story in your song. This is probably the most artsy-fartsy, airy-fairy, creative part of songwriting, and it's probably my favorite. I'm Corinne, and if you haven't watched the last two challenges, I'll drop links in the description so that you can go back and watch them. Which comes first? The melody or the words? You can do it whichever way you want. Some people start with a melody and then they write their words to fit the melody. Other people start with the words and then let the words guide the melody. I kind of do a combination. I usually start with words and let those words lead my way into the melody. But later in the song, if I'm repeating part of the melody, such as when I'm doing a second or third verse, then I'll write the words to match up with the melody. Whichever comes first for you, try to let the melody reinforce your words. Think about tone of voice. If you like somebody, you're not gonna say, I think you're a great person. That doesn't make sense. The tone doesn't go with the words that you're saying. You'd say, I think you're a great person. Doesn't that make more sense? This is similar to what we talked about last week about mood. You want the mood of your song to match the subject of your song, just like you want the melody of your song to match the words of your song. So for example, if you really wanna drive home the words in your chorus, you might want to sing higher and have longer notes and be louder. I have a really good example for this one. But I advice is don't overthink it. Just play your chord progression and start singing. Keep what you like and change what you don't. So last week we talked about the shape of a song and the different components that build it. We talked about having verses, having a repeating chorus, and then having a bridge or a pre-chorus. Let's talk about what you want to do lyrically in each one of those components. The verse tells the story of your song. Yep, songwriting is just storytelling, but in a musical way. You can be wordy. This is your chance to say what you want to say. Tell your story, draw in the listener. You can tell your story from a first person perspective, like I was walking down the street. You can tell your story from a second person perspective, like you're singing to someone or sending someone a letter or a message, you make me feel so happy. Or you can tell from a third person perspective, she couldn't sleep last night, so she got up and started writing a song. Now the chorus is your main message. It's the heart of your song. If the verses are all about storytelling, then the chorus is about feeling telling. And yes, I made that word up. The chorus is often repetitive. Like the example I just played for you, I will always love you, I will always love you. What do we learn from that chorus? That I will always love you. The chorus is like the most fun part of the song. It's the most singable part of the song. So get in there, dig in, and write a chorus that you love. Some songs have a pre-chorus, which I like to think of as a little mini chorus, and it leads up or builds up to your chorus. For example, I keep cruising, can't stop, won't stop moving. It's like I got this music in my mind saying it's gonna be all right. Cause the hate is gonna hate, 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 hate. So in that song, 
Taylor uses her pre-chorus to build up to her chorus. If your verses are really chill and you have a big slamming chorus, then you might want to use a pre-chorus to build up to your chorus. Another optional additional piece of a song is a bridge, which you may remember from last week. I'm going to have a bridge in my song. A bridge is kind of like an additional thought. Sometimes it can express a change of thought or a change of heart. It can contain words or thoughts that you wanted to put in but they didn't quite fit in the verse or the chorus. It's often different musically from your chorus and your verse. This is a good place to put something nonsensical. Like if you wanted some... Or some... Or maybe some whistling. I'm not going to give you guys a challenge and not take on that challenge myself. Let's walk through how I wrote my song for this challenge. If you remember from last week, my chord progression for my chorus and my verse was A minor, F, C, G, and then I decided to have a bridge that had C, G, A minor, A minor. And I chose kind of a sad mood and a little bit dramatic. And that's based on the subject of my song. When I was thinking about what I wanted to write a song about, I looked around me. I'm working in the library, right? and the library has been closed for months. I'm looking around and what do I see? Books. Books. Everywhere there are books in the library and they haven't been checked out for months. I thought, you know, if those books could think or feel, they'd probably feel lonely. And that inspired me to write a song. Lonely books on the shelf Waiting to be checked out by somebody else Dusty pages, uncracked spines They haven't been read in such a long time If you're struggling to find words for your song, think about what you know. Think about your experiences. Observe the world around you you'll be surprised how much inspiration you can find. Okay, let's get to the chorus, the heart of the song. This is the emotional message that I want my song to get across. I feel like these books want to be read. That's what my chorus is gonna say. It's going to express that yearning. isn't exactly repetitive, at least not by words, but it does use the same melody twice over. And of course it's repetitive in the sense that the chorus will repeat multiple times in the song. I'm only going to have two verses in my song. You can have more verses. You can have just one verse. It's up to you. You're the songwriter. In my second verse, I'm going to use the melody from my first verse. This is usually what we do. We usually use the same melody in all of our verses because that helps the listener follow along and it also helps them sing along because people want to sing along to your song. I'm going to use my second verse to add more to my story. Quiet halls, empty floors, no one seems to come to my house anymore. Check the catalog. My bridge has a different chord progression. I want to take this opportunity to add some 
oohs, but I also want to invite the listener into the story. I want to issue a call to action. Look at the books. Sometimes I like to use the bridge as a chance to do a little ad-libbing, to make something up on the spot. So that's my creative process. You need to find your creative process. Everything we've talked about in this series is supposed to give you tools and building blocks for writing your song, but ultimately it's your creativity baby. This is a chance for you to express yourself, to tell your story. So don't let conventions or rules get in the way of your creative expression. Use them as tools instead. Sometimes it's a good idea to break the rules. Last week I talked about the rule of fours, keeping your chord progressions in sets of four. Well, here's a really good reason why you might wanna break that. And actually, I'm gonna break that rule in my song multiple times. Sometimes you might need to add in an extra chord at the end of a verse or at the end of a chorus. This can add dramatic effect. It can give you time to take a breath or it can help you fit in words without sounding like you're rushing from one sentence to the next. Another way that songwriters sometimes choose to break the rules is with the mood of a song. We've talked about wanting to match the mood of your song with the subject of your song, but sometimes songwriters will take a sad subject and write it to an upbeat song. This is kind of a way of expressing dark humor or irony. You'd expect it to sound sad, but they want to be ironic, and so they make it sound happy. Now I've got another really important piece of advice for you. This is a song. It's not the song. If you like songwriting, you're going to write lots of different songs, and they're going to get better and better the more that you write them. So just try things out, come back later, and you can change it if you want to. Remember, this is your song. It's your story and you need to tell it the way that you want to tell it. So your final challenge in this three-part songwriting series is to add words and a melody to your song. This is going to complete your song. Once you've completed your song, record it. We'd love to hear it. You can record a voice memo on your phone or you can make a video and send it to us. You can send it directly to us on Facebook Messenger or you can upload it to YouTube and send us the link. We would love to share it. Now, we are all using the same building blocks in this challenge, but all of our songs are gonna sound different. This is just like how writers use the same set of words in the English language to write totally different books. So don't worry too much about trying to be original. Just express yourself and have fun. You're gonna be original because there's only one you in the world. Here's my song that I wrote using the same building blocks of this challenge.
This might be the last week of our songwriting challenge, but it's not the last week of teen challenge. Check back next week. I think we're going to be solving a crime.